Welcome, everyone. I'm Sue Barber, author, former IT director for a Fortune 500 company, turn executive coach, and this is the Visibility Factor Podcast, where we explore how to raise your visibility and play bigger at work and in life. We'll explore key topics and welcome guests that help you shift your thinking about yourself so you can see new possibilities for your leadership. I'm on a mission to create a visibility movement for leaders to show their value and be seen for their true talent. Are you ready to take the next step towards a higher level of visibility for yourself? Let's go. The Visibility Factor podcast is brought to you in part by the 90 Day Visibility Breakthrough Accelerator Program. Do you believe deep down inside that you can have a bigger career, but you don't know how to get there? You can keep doing what you're doing, but what if there is a better way that could accelerate your progress? This 90-day program is a powerful experience that is unique to you and provides dedicated time to focus on your specific challenge. It gives you the time to develop big ideas and plans to execute them, including the tools, resources, and motivation needed for success. Hundreds of clients have used this same program to take them to the next level in their career and to create a better life. Join me in a 90-day experience that focuses on challenges like creating a strategic plan, how to lead an organizational change, or prepare for a career transition. This dedicated time will help you see new possibilities, recognize your strengths, and take away key insights that can be leveraged immediately. Are you ready to create a breakthrough for yourself? If you're interested in learning more, visit susanmbarber.com forward slash visibility breakthrough accelerator for more information and to sign up for the program. I look forward to seeing you there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Visibility Factor podcast. This is Sue Barber, your host. Today's conversation is going to be about external validation versus internal validation. Now, these may be new terms for you, but I'm going to walk you through what they are and what the impacts can be for you if you are on either side of that coin. So when I left Craft, I was being coached by someone who advised me to read a book by Byron Katie called Loving What Is, Four Questions That Can Change Your Life. Now, I've talked a little bit about Byron Katie in my book, and she has done some amazing things for people and helping them work through trauma and work through depression and some other issues that they've had. But what I learned about in that book was about external validation. What that means is that you are getting your feelings of self-worth based on what others say or how they act towards you. If this sounds familiar to you, you may have been craving this from others and did not even realize it. I definitely didn't realize it. It most likely starts when you're a child and your parents or a coach, if you're on a sports team, told you that you're doing a great job on something. It moves into school where your teachers say you do a great job and they reward you with a good grade. And then you go into the workplace and it looks the same. You crave the pats on the back, the praise, and the higher ratings or recognition awards. When I read Byron Katie's book, I realized that I was using my leadership team's feedback and ratings to tell me if I was doing a good job and even if I was worthy or not. External validation refers to the process of seeking validation or approval from others as a way of boosting your self-esteem and your self-worth. This validation can come in many forms. It may show up in the form of compliments, recognition, praise, and it can come from individuals, groups, or even society or the people that you spend the most time with. People often seek external validation because they want to feel accepted and valued by others. This is particularly true when they feel unsure about their own abilities or when they are dealing with low self-esteem. By seeking validation from others, they hope to feel more confident in their abilities and more secure in their sense of self. However, external validation can also have negative consequences. For example, if someone becomes too reliant on the validation of others, they may struggle to develop a sense of worth for themselves and their own self-confidence. They may also be vulnerable to the opinions and judgments of others, which can lead to feelings of anxiety, self-doubt, and insecurity. There's a quote by Eleanor Roosevelt that says, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. I remember reading this quote on one of my coworkers calendars in her office, and it really stuck with me. At that moment, I was having a lot of self-doubts and a lot of questions about my ability to be successful in IT. But the question that I had to ask myself back then is, why am I giving power to them? Why am I giving power to people who don't know enough about me? They don't know my situation. And I'm letting them make me feel small and unimportant. And that's not necessary. You can do something about that. So let's recap real quick about what the biggest impacts of relying on external validation are. 
It can prevent a person from developing a strong sense of self-worth and self-confidence. When a person depends on the validation of others for their self-esteem, they may feel insecure or inadequate when they don't feel like they have this validation from other people. It leads to a cycle of seeking more validation and feeling even worse when it isn't received. Seeking external validation can prevent a person from developing their own sense of identity and personal values. If a person is constantly looking for other people to tell them that they're doing the right things, they will adapt their behavior or beliefs to fit in with those expectations rather than staying true to themselves. Finally, relying on external validation can prevent a person from taking risks and pursuing their goals. If a person is constantly seeking validation from others, they're hesitant to take action that others may not approve of, even if those actions are aligned with their personal values and goals. Now, when I was reading Byron Katie's book, this concept really hit home for me. I was looking for others to tell me if I measured up with what they wanted, but was it what I wanted? I realized that I had never even thought to ask that question to any great degree of myself. As I read through the book further, I learned about the importance of internal validation. This means that you are gaining your sense of self-worth based on how you see yourself and your own opinions. You have probably heard me talk about the importance of self-trust before. You get to define your own self-worth, and that comes from letting go of the comparison of others, external validation, and you begin trusting yourself. Once I realized that I'm the only person that gets to answer that question of my self-worth, it changed everything for me. External validation can be helpful in moderation, but it is important to remember that true self-worth comes from within and should not depend solely on the opinions of others. I'm going to share a few quotes from Byron Katie's work on this topic and then talk about how to begin to focus on internally validating yourself. Some of these quotes were so impactful for me, and I hope they help you think about some things differently. So the first quote, we don't hear what someone said, we imagine what they meant. In other words, if they look at us the wrong way, don't do what they say they would do, use a different tone or react differently than usual, we create a story that those actions must mean something about us. We take it personally and make it about us. It can have absolutely nothing to do with us at all. They could just be having a bad day, came out of a conversation that was difficult, be upset with something that happened five hours ago, or maybe they got in a small accident on the way to work and they have let it ruin their day, and now everyone else's day too. They're just projecting that situation into every conversation. So just stop and ask yourself if this is in any way about you before assuming it is. If you see them acting differently, don't make it about you. Ask some questions. Maybe what they're doing isn't making sense. So stop the conversation and ask them if they're okay. Share your observation of what you are seeing so they know what they are doing. They could have absolutely no idea that they're even doing anything wrong. Have you experienced this in your work or even at home? Do you assume if someone yells about something or looks at you the wrong way that it is about you? Ask yourself some questions before making that assumption. Remember, it could have nothing to do with you at all. For this next quote, it is referring to relationships, which may be another place where you may be seeking external validation. When you hear this, you can listen from that lens of a romantic relationship, a friendship, or a work relationship. How do you react when you think you need people's love? Do you become a slave for their approval? Do you live an inauthentic life because you can't bear the thought that they might disapprove of you? Do you try to figure out how they would like you to be and then try to become that, like a chameleon? You turn into someone you aren't, and then when they say, I love you, you can't believe it because they're loving a facade. They're loving someone who doesn't even exist, the person you're pretending to be. It's difficult to seek other people's love. It's deadly. In seeking it, you lose what is genuine. This is the prison we create for ourselves as we seek what we already have. So that quote was so powerful in so many ways. When I first heard it, I was constantly doing everything in my power to be what I thought everyone I worked with wanted me to be. People would tell me I was doing great, but I didn't believe them. And that's because I wasn't being myself anymore. Honestly, at that time, I couldn't even tell you who I was. I had lost myself. I didn't know how to be who I was and feel like that would be accepted by them. To be fair, I didn't recognize this at that point. My confidence wasn't in a good place and I didn't trust myself to be my authentic self. I remember reading this part of the book and saying out loud, why didn't I read this book 10 years ago? (laughs) It would have been so helpful. Imagine what could have been different if I had. 
Eleanor Roosevelt is known for a quote that has been attributed to her that states, you wouldn't worry so much about what others think of you if you realized how much they seldom do. If you know that the people you interact with are not even thinking about you, what does that do for you? You can do what you think is right, make your own decisions. I see it as a completely empowering and so freeing thing to think about it that way. They're not thinking about you at all. They're thinking about themselves and what you think about them. How great is that? You can stop worrying about what they think. So I want you to think about this for yourself. Is this something you are doing too? Be an observer of how you are showing up, words that you are using and actions that you are taking. Are they for you or for someone else? Imagine a world for yourself, personally and professionally, where you do what you think is right. You do what you think is right, you make the decisions you think are right, and you take action. How much could your life change if you did that? And the last quote is, placing the blame or judgment on someone else leaves you powerless to change your experience. Taking responsibility for your beliefs and judgments gives you the power to change them. This quote made me think about the moment where I got the feedback that I was being invisible from my mentor. My immediate reaction in that moment was to be defensive. I could have stayed a victim and blamed everyone else, including her, for my actions. But I made the choice to explore the feedback. Was she right? Was I being invisible? Of course, the answer was yes. I took responsibility for what I was doing at that time. I started to look at my beliefs about my leadership and saw that I was living in imposter syndrome, playing small and judging others. I learned that I was the only one who could do something different. No one else could change these things for me. I took back the power and my confidence grew. I started taking actions that were uncomfortable, but they helped me show up in a way that was more myself. Everything I did at home and at work was intentionally focused to be myself. It helped me set a better example for my team and my family. It took me many years to realize that what others think doesn't matter. What I think is what is important. Is there anywhere in your life where you may be blaming others for what is happening in your work life or maybe your personal life? What do you want to do to change that? You can start today simply by changing the way you look at it. When you change the way you look at it or think about it, you will take different actions, actions that move you out of blaming others and into confidence for yourself. You can't change what other people think or what they will say. You can only control yourself, how you think, and what you do. There comes a time when you need to let all those critical comments go. Believe in yourself, accept who you are, and know that what you are doing is the right thing for you. Taking this path is exciting, a little scary, and so rewarding all at the same time. You don't need anyone else's approval or agreement anymore. All you need to do is accept yourself, keep marching down your path, and find the people who will be there to support you as you move forward on this journey. If you are struggling with putting yourself out there, take small steps. Another quote to help you on this is, what people think about you is not important. What you think of yourself means everything. Start trusting your gut, taking risks, make decisions, and realize that you know exactly what to do. As your confidence grows, you'll begin making bigger decisions, and what other people think doesn't even enter into your thought process anymore. Many of my clients have these same issues, and as they are moving past this way of thinking, they are seeing how amazing their lives can be. I believe they are coming to me for help because I have been through this myself. This is why I'm so passionate about helping them move past it. It is such a waste of gifts and talents to hold yourself back from all the things that you could potentially achieve in your life and your career. So now let's talk about the visibility action step for today. I'd like to introduce you to a concept called self-validation. Self-validation is accepting your own internal experience, your thoughts, and your feelings for where you are at that moment. Self-validation doesn't mean that you believe your thoughts or that your feelings are justified. There are many times that you will have thoughts that surprise you or don't reflect your values or what is true. Take a look at those thoughts to see if they're helping you or holding you back. There's a great uh, set of questions that comes from Risa Stein, professor of psychology at Rockhurst University in Missouri. She says, get to know yourself. What drives you? What are your values? Not your mentors, not your bosses, not your parents, yours. There's a lot of societal, cultural, and even family messages that come to you about what you should do. You need to make money. You need to marry well. You need to have a big house. You need to make great grades. But are those the things that will make you happy? 
How much of our time is spent on automatic pilot and not even questioning if we want those things? So your action today is to slow down and listen to what is inside of yourself. What do you want for yourself and will it make you happy? Thanks so much for joining today on the Visibility Factor podcast and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for listening to the Visibility Factor podcast. Remember that visibility starts with small steps that are intentional and consistent each day. Be bold, be visible, be the leader you were meant to be. Find us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on all of our social media platforms, which are highlighted in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Visibility Factor Podcast.